Welcome to Oregon Outdoors, I'm Mark Freeman. Now, did a little something different this week, slipped over the Oregon border into California for a totally different kind of lava experience. Now, we in the Rogue Valley know all about Mount Mazama blowing up, causing Rogue River, yada, yada, yada. But you know, if you come down the Lava Beds National Monument, you have a totally different magma experience. Massive lava flows that oozed 35,000 years ago from craters like this all across Northern California flatlands. Now that lava flowed in great rivers that eventually created these stunning caves the monument is known for. Disappear into black, deep into the earth where natural light never ventures. Find hidden spectacles of life. Revel in the pure silence and darkness that a remote cave offers. Lava Beds National Monument is southeast of Klamath Falls, and you know, it seems like far away, but it's only two and a half hours from Medford. It's among these massive flatlands, a high desert. It's an easy place to feel alone among the basalt formations that are almost three times as old as those around Crater Lake. And it shows you that these Cascade volcanoes are not all the same. So, you know, most people think about lava explosions and volcanoes. It's the tops of volcanoes like Mount Mazama blowing off, but you know, this is different. This is sheet lava. Right. You are looking at a part of the Medicine Lake Shield volcano, something absolutely enormous in space, but relatively low to the ground overall. This crater right here is Mammoth Crater. Imagine this massive expanse completely full of lava. There were a number of eruptions out here, particularly about 35,000 years ago. Wow. And it thundered across the landscape, roiling just very slowly. At other times, it was a massive river flowing outwards. So a lot of the caves that you can see throughout the park, the lava originated from this spot right here. Wow. And then made its way carving out different spaces as it spread out from this expanse. And when we're talking about the Medicine Lake Shield Volcano, about 10% of it is within the park. So Medicine Lake Shield Volcano is absolutely massive. It is probably by volume the largest shield volcano within the Cascade Range. Largest volcano in the Cascade Range. Wow. It's not sexy like Mount Mazama blowing up. <laughs> but it does form some of the cooler things about this place, the caves. We got it. We got to see those. We got to go see the caves. Yeah. yeah. Literally one of the coolest spots. <laughs> So some of these cave entrances are pretty nondescript. It's like, you can walk right by this thing and not realize that. They're tucked away everywhere out here. We actually have 900 caves within the park. Wow. And we're still discovering them to this day. In part, you can see because lots of times you don't spot them on the surface. This one originally just had a juniper tree growing over it. And it was discovered on Valentine Day after it was assumed that all the caves had been found. But on one very, very cold winter's day, a cook saw steam rising up from this area, almost like dragon's breath coming up out of the ground. <laughs> so one of the best times to discover new caves, which is still happening to this day, come out here in the middle of winter. Because the caves are so much warmer and humid compared to the surface that time of year, you can see the caves literally exhaling. But the real treasures are down inside. <laughs> Everything is drama with you, isn't it, Clint? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be in theater, so it pops up every now and then. This is incredible in here. Yeah. So is this exactly, I mean, you guys didn't cut anything out in here, right? It just, this is how it's formed. The one thing you'll see in here is a lot of rocks were removed on the side. There was some breakdown down here, but other than that, what you're looking at is completely natural here. So you'll even notice there was some sort of huge obstacle for the lava, so it split off in two separate paths in this initial opening. So you have a massive column right here. But really, the lava that flows through here, the way you get a cave like this, is you have a river of lava flowing through the environment, and it's just like a stream freezing in the winter. Mm -hmm. So it'll crust over on top first, but then that acts as natural insulation, so the lava will keep flowing on through. In some of these caves, they're over a mile long, so they can keep going and going and splitting off in multiple directions. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, so as we're moving in a little bit deeper, you're gonna feel the temperature change a little bit. Oh, yeah. Down in here, it's about 50 degrees year-round. And we're moving on into the twilight zone where there's 
almost no light. It's getting darker and darker as you move on into the depths. And you'll start to discover new things as you move into the cave. But for that, we probably need just a little bit of light too. Let's check it out. Oh wow. Kind of got to watch your head. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's one of the reasons why we wear these hats. Hey, my hat is my superpower. <laughs> it's important. It's important. <laughs> I see a lot of these cracks in here. Yeah, fortunately, this is a very safe environment. People see the cracks and they wonder about that. Most of these cracks formed right as the cave was solidified because as something current turns solid, it's going to be shrinking down inside. So a lot of this cave collapsed about 11,000 years or so, give or take. One thing you'll notice, this cave is actually very close to the surface. You can even see roots poking through on the <laughs> ceiling. That's really cool. And one thing you'll see on the floor is if you ever get lost in a cave, just follow the pohoihoi. Hoi. Sometimes you'll find these nice curves on the floor. Wait, wait, pohoihoi? Hoi? Pohoi hoi. it's a Hawaiian for ropey. Oh, so that's okay. one type of lava. That's when the lava's flowing like molasses. So it kind of bunches yeah. up in these nice bands. And as it gets harder and harder, it shifts from being almost molasses in texture further into this ah uh -uh lava, where it's almost sort of cauliflower shaped. Mm. And ah uh -uh is just a way of saying ah uh -uh. You know, it's like the sound you'd make if you were walking on it barefoot. One thing I love about this cave is there are multiple branching paths. So there's an easy path for those who want to keep it nice and open, and then there's more challenging paths for those who want to go on a little bit of an adventure. <laughs> left. All right, all right, we'll do left. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's why you gotta wear closed toe shoes in here. <laughs> so does anything live in these things? Quite a bit, actually. Although most of the time you're not going to spot them. So closer to the surface you find your troglophiles, the things that love using caves, but they don't need to live down here all the time. We actually have pica down here, which I think is amazing. Really? Because typically you find them much higher elevation, but down here, a cave like this is the perfect shelter for something like that. Wow. We have 15 different bat species here. We actually just discovered one relatively recently. So we'll have things like the Townsend's Big Ear Bat, which actually has ears about twice the size of their head. They'll actually, when they're hibernating, curl those ears up almost like a sleeping bag. <laughs> and we actually have thousands of bats within the park. As we go down in here, you'll actually be able to see little hints of what almost looks like gold on the sides of the walls. So this is that hydrophobic bacteria and it forms these giant mats. Sometimes it's called cave slime. And one thing you'll notice is water tends to beat up on the surface of these mats. And they have a filament structure where water just tends to get pushed away and gather in these beads. So as a result, when light shines on it just right, it glitters just like gold. So when people come down here, you don't want them to touch the walls, do you? Right, yeah, absolutely. This is a very sensitive environment. So one way you can help protect these caves is be real careful about touching the walls, especially when you see any signs of life like this. This is very, very slow growing. So when a piece of this gets wiped out, it takes decades for it to regrow. Wow. You don't get far, too far ahead with that light, man. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> So you can see tons of lava sickles up on the ceiling here, here, and water is actually dripping down through parts of them. So in most caves, these are going to be called stalactites. A little bit different here, for sure. So wow, lots of times you get in solution caves, like organ caves, stalactites, is, it's calcium carbonate flowing down into the cave. In this case, most of what you're seeing here, it's that initial melting that happened on the ceiling. But water can still find grooves to travel through. So every so often you're gonna get water dripping down right in the center of some of these materials. And it adds on just a tiny bit of mineral each time it gets into these rooms. So in a sense, it'll start as a lava sickle, but then you can start to see tiny, tiny hints of calcium carbonate left behind on the ceiling as well. Stalactite starter kit. You got it, you got it. <laughs> Watch your head up through here. We got some low ceilings. This is really awesome. Yeah, just imagine being one of the first explorers coming through a place like this. Originally, people would have come down here sometimes just with a single individual candle, just the tiniest amount of light as they explored the darkness. Now to this day, we have better equipment, but I think there's still that 
thrill of discovery, that it's still possible to discover something, to find light shining on something that no human being has ever seen before, that there's still incredible wonders down inside of the depths of the earth. And I find like it can feel alarming at first sometimes to be in a cave. We're just not used to this sort of environment, but over time you grow more and more comfortable in a place like this. And I find these places just to be incredibly peaceful. I love the fact that you have near total silence and that also you can come here and experience true fall darkness. So if you don't mind, I think I'd like this to put us into absolute darkness to experience what it's like when there is not a single hint of light. Do you want to try that out? Oh yeah. All right, so we'll turn out the lights right about now. We need that light to get out of here.